Tonight in Newsnight Scotland, serious doubts over funding for the pioneering carbon capture and storage plant at Long Annet, as negotiations between the UK government and Scottish Power are said to be close to collapse. And ending sectarianism seemed like a policy everyone could get behind, so why is support for the anti-sectarianism legislation crumbling? Good evening. There's growing concern that plans to develop carbon capture and storage technology at Long Annet and Fife could be close to collapse. Scottish Power is bidding for a billion pounds in funding from the UK government to help pay for the project. Both sides insist negotiations are continuing, but sources have told BBC Scotland the future of the scheme is now in serious doubt. Long Annet is the third largest coal-fired power station in Europe, but it's also one of the biggest polluters. It produces energy for two million people and emits between seven million and eight million tonnes of carbon dioxide every year. Carbon capture and storage, or CCS, would reduce that amount and allow it to keep operating without undermining efforts to cut CO2 emissions. The theory of carbon capture is simple enough. Coal is excavated and sent to a power station where it's burned to create power. The station then captures the CO2 and sends it through a pipeline offshore where it's pumped several kilometres below sea level into a depleted gas or oil field. A layer of rock acts as a cap which prevents the CO2 escaping back into the atmosphere. But the technology doesn't come cheap. Scottish Power, which owns the Fife plant, has bid for a billion pounds from a government scheme to develop a prototype system. A year ago, it became the only entrant after energy giant E.ON dropped plans for a plant at its proposed Kings North power station in Kent. But the BBC understands talks between the company and the Department for Energy and Climate Change are close to collapse, with question marks over the UK government's commitment to an as yet unproven technology. The First Minister, Alex Salmond, is a long-term supporter of CCS and wants Scotland to become a world leader in the technology. Tonight, the Scottish Government insisted Long Annet remains a contender in the CCS competition and talks between Scottish Power and the UK Government are continuing. But environmentalists are warning the collapse of the scheme would be a major blow to international efforts to develop carbon capture and storage. Well, I'm joined for the second time this week by the Scottish Power Professor of Carbon Capture and Storage at Edinburgh University, Stuart Hazeldy, and by the Green MSP, Patrick Harvey. Well, Stuart Hazeldy, why has it come to this? Why are there problems getting these things off the ground? Well, because this has never been done anywhere in the world on this size scale before. So parts of the carbon capture and storage chain exist in oil fields, other parts exist in oil refineries, some parts exist in chemical plants. But joining this up together with a power company, a pipeline transport company, National Grid, and then an underground storage disposal company, which is Shell Oil and Gas, that's never been done. So these are very big, expensive projects because it's a very big power plant which supplies a lot of people. But let's get this right, to do the whole project would only cost eight pounds a year for each electricity household in the UK. So actually to, uh, to do a big lump of getting towards the green economy, that's the price we're gonna have to pay. And, and I presume the problem here is money. The problem is ultimately money. This is a very well organised project. The uh, study of the engineering has been done. People have, hundreds of people literally have worked overtime, unpaid overtime for a couple of years on this in a very dedicated way. So the design is there, the pipeline permissions are all there, the pipeline will work and the storage site offshore is one of the best storage sites I've seen in the world. In fact, tonight I was at a talk in Edinburgh at the Scottish Oil Club where some more of that geology was revealed and it's a gold standard storage site. So technically this, is a, a, this project will work. The problem is, as you say, money. How much will it cost to do that versus how much is on offer from the UK government? Right, now, if this does collapse, um, what else is there? Because th this was the big one, wasn't it? This is indeed the big one. This would be the biggest one in the world. And so the UK has taken a bit of a gamble in trying to go for this big one. Other countries are still tiptoeing around large scale practice endeavours. But somebody's got to do this because if we're going to carry on using fossil fuel, as no matter how fast renewables grow, it's very difficult to see phasing fossil fuel out for the next 40, 50 years. So we have to do this. Somebody's got to do this, and the UK is very well organised at doing this sort of stuff, but we're pretty timid about paying the price for what it's really worth. We see the cost, but not the value. Now, I, I know you're not the biggest fan of these 
projects. But but does it concern you? We have to be a little bit careful here. After all, this thing has not collapsed as yet. Mm -hmm. It's 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 possible. What's going on at the moment is is if you like a a manoeuvre in, in, in ongoing negotiations. But if it does collapse, as, 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 as seems at least possible, if not probable, um, it, it does seem to suggest policymakers are perhaps moving away from the green agenda, doesn't it? Well, I don't think it implies anything about the green agenda, which is a bit of an amorphous term anyway. I do hope that this project doesn't collapse, uh, although I've, I've been sceptical about the assumption that CCS uh, will be a technology that we can we can rely on. I've always supported the research. I do want to find out if it can work. There are, as Stuart said, huge technical challenges, many of which are being overcome, but we won't know for sure if this technology can work until we see it working. There are also huge commercial challenges to overcome to make a, a system that's that's actually credible, that's actually viable in the real world. Now, my big problem has always been that both governments, Scottish and UK governments, have been relying on a heroic assumption that CCS will just work on a timescale they can predict, uh, and on that assumption they're basing the permission to go ahead with new fossil fuel capacity. Okay. And that's an appalling prospect, right. because you, we you don't might, know if this technology I might, I get, will you might, work. Even from your point of view, agree with that. I mean, for example, this Hunterston proposal, uh, for a new coal-fired power station, it seems to uh, it's not been approved yet, but, mm -hmm. it, but it, it's approved on condition. It installs a technology which is not commercially proven. Yep, so so why gamble. not why not wait until it's proven before you approve the power station? Well, you can't have your cake and eat it in this because we are now there's a lot, been a lot of talk about the future energy crisis, but I think we are now in the energy crisis. So with the European legislation which comes into force from 2016, that will close practically all of the coal-fired power plants in the UK. That's half of our electricity generation. What are we going to do? We can't build enough windmills even if we'd like to before then. We can't uh, do carbon capture and storage before then because as we've seen we can't even get project one going reliably. It's been four years in evolution we're still not there yet. So you're going to have to build something to keep the lights on. The power industry the, the, will this build also, gas I mean, plants. Just coming back to this Long Island thing, yeah. if this doesn't go ahead this is presumably a big blow for the government's idea of using green technology to reindustrialize Scotland because uh, it, th this potentially was a technology that would have been developed here and who knows could even have ended yeah. up being manufactured yeah. here. So I agree with you that uh, but let's be honest that the Scottish government's all in favor of it but the money is still controlled by the Treasury in Westminster and it's always the Treasury that's the blockage. In 2005 we had the Peterhead proposition in 2011 we've got the Longanit proposition. The funding gap and the ask is almost identical. What's needed is a green certificate to help this, of extra funding to help these projects run at a P Peterhead is still on the table, isn't it? Peterhead 1 was a, a very advanced proposition from BP and Scottish and Southern. Now we're in 2011, Scottish and Southern are partnering up with a different company to do a slightly different type of carbon capture. They're applying for funding, that's not there yet. Patrick Harvey, I mean, taking your point, okay, about you shouldn't maybe approve coal-fired power stations without the technology being proven, but the other side of this, surely, is is that this is the big one. I mean, if you look at it on a on a global scale, mm -hmm. um, you know, China, even though it's installing more wind power than anywhere else, is going to be installing uh, fossil fuel plants, sometimes running on brown coal, so as India and other developing countries. If you could fit these power stations with some sort of CCS technology, it's probably the single biggest thing you could do to combat global warming, given that I, they, they are not going to stop building coal fire power stations. I, I agree with that, but the most important word in your question is F. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear, and I think we can, we can probably all hear, uh, Stuart's frustration in describing the process and the blockages from the Treasury and so on. But whatever the political context, there are still technical challenges to overcome, there are still commercial challenges to overcome, and we cannot rely on this assumption that CCS will work. We do need to continue to put pressure on the UK government and on other governments in Europe to be supporting this, because it, it is, as your question implies, a collective endeavour, or should be seen as one. If we can make it work, we absolutely must, but we can't rely on that if. We can't put too much faith in that if and we can't approve new coal-fired power station, uh, the one in Hunterston or anywhere else, okay. on the assumption 
that this technology will one day be available. Luke, what's the bottom line here? If this, is, if this collapses, is that it for the whole idea of Scotland being a leader in CCS? That's not, that's not it, but it's a very serious setback because uh, the next projects on the book in the UK could be one in Yorkshire, Don Valley project in Yorkshire, there's the Hunterston project, and as you mentioned, there's the Peterhead gas project. The most sensible of those for the long term would be to look at capture on gas, because my prediction is we're going to be generating 70% of our electricity from gas to fill in between the wind power as the wind power cycles through the And that's an area the, where Scotland isn't is, is, is or isn't particularly... Scotland, we can build, and those, that capture equipment with Scottish firms in Renfrew, Doosan and Renfrew can build the capture equipment. It's a Scottish company on that power plant. But again, it's an end-to-end -end project. What's lacking is the government to take over more of the funding or more of the risk for the companies because you have to join all these companies up. And that's what has failed have, to do at the moment. I have to say as well, though, if the government was willing to put a billion pounds into demand reduction, yeah. that would okay, go a exactly. long way to we meeting to, our energy needs as well. Okay. We've got the well, worst insulated sorry. housing in Europe. We we'll need to fix to, that. We'll have to leave it there. Luke, thank you both.